probably approximately correct learning, packed learning. Using the tightest rectangle S as our hypothesis, we would like to find how many examples we need. We would like our hypothesis to be approximately correct, namely that the error probability be bounded by some value. We also would like to be confident in our hypothesis in that we want to know that our hypothesis will be correct most of the time, if not always, so we want to be probably correct as well by a probability we can specify. In a probably approximately correct PAC learning, given a class C, and examples drawn from some unknown but fixed probability distribution, P of x, we want to find the number of examples n such that with the probability at least 1 minus delta, the hypothesis h has error at most epsilon, for arbitrarily delta, which is less than or equal to 1 half, and uh, arbitrarily epsilon, which is greater than 0. So, that is, the probability of C delta H, which is less than or equals to epsilon, such a probability is greater than or equals to 1 minus delta, where C delta H is the region of difference between C and H. In our case, because S is the tightest um, possible rectangle, the error region between C and H equals to S is the sum of four rectangular strips. We would like to make sure that the probability of a positive example falling in here and uh, causing an error is at most epsilon. For any of these strips, if we can guarantee that the probability is upper bounded by epsilon divided by 4, the error is at most 4 times epsilon divided by 4, which is equal to epsilon. Note that we count the overlaps in the corners twice and the total actual error in this case is less than 4 times epsilon over 4. The probability that a randomly drawn example misses this strip is 1 minus epsilon over 4. The probability that all n independent draws miss the strip is 1 minus epsilon over 4. Such a value then to the exponential of n and uh, the probability that all n independent draws means any of the four strips is at most 4 times 1 minus epsilon over 4 to the n, which we would like to be at most uh, delta. So we have uh, the inequality uh, by our knowledge in calculus that 1 minus x, which is less than or equal to uh, the exponential of minus x, so, if we choose n and delta such that we have 4 times uh, exponential to the minus epsilon times n over 4, which is less than or equal to delta, we can also write 4 times 1 minus epsilon over 4 to the n, which is less than or equal to delta. Uh, dividing both sides by 4, taking natural log and uh, rearranging terms, we have that n, which is greater than or equal to 4 divided by epsilon times log of 4 divided by delta. So therefore, provided that we take at least 4 divided by epsilon times log of 4 divided by delta independent examples from C and use the tightest rectangle as our hypothesis H with a confidence probability at least 1 minus delta, a given point will be misclassified with error probability at most epsilon. We can have arbitrary large confidence by decreasing delta and arbitrarily small error by decreasing epsilon. And uh, we see in an equation, uh, the equation that we have deducted uh, before, that the number of examples is a slowly growing function of 1 over epsilon and 1 over delta, linear and logarithmic respectively. Noise. Noise is any unwanted anomaly in the data and due to noise, the class may be more difficult to learn and a zero error may be infeasible with a simple hypothesis class. 
So there are several interpretations of noise. There may be imprecision in a recording the input attributes, which may shift the data points in the input space. There may be errors in labeling the data points, which may relabel positive instances as negative and vice versa. This is sometimes called a teacher noise. There may be additional attributes which we have not taken into account that affect the label of an instance. Such attributes may be hidden or latent in that they may be unobservable. The effect of these neglected attributes is thus modeled as a random component and is included in noise. As can be seen in figure um, that when there is noise, there is not a simple boundary between the positive and negative instances, and to separate them, one needs a complicated hypothesis that corresponds to a hypothesis class with larger capacity. A rectangle can be defined by four numbers, but to define a more complicated shape one needs a more complex model with a much larger number of parameters. With a complex model, one can make a perfect fit to the data and attain zero error. See the wiggly shape in a figure. Another possibility is to keep the model simple and allow some error. See the rectangle. In figure 2.8, using the simple rectangle unless its training error is much bigger makes more sense because of the following. 1. It is a simple model to use. It is easy to check whether a point is inside or outside a rectangle and we can easily check for a future data instance, whether it is a positive or a negative instance. 2. It is a simple model to train and has fewer parameters. It is easier to find the corner values of a rectangle than uh, the control points of an arbitrary shape. With a small training set, when the training instances differ a little bit, we expect the simpler model to change less than a complex model. A simple model is thus said to have less variance. On the other hand, a too simple model assumes more, is more rigid, and may fail if needed the underlying class is not that simple. A simpler model has more bias. Finding the optimal model corresponds to minimizing both the bias and the variance. 3. It is a simple model to explain. A rectangle simply corresponds to defining intervals on the two attributes. By learning a simple model, we can extract information from the raw data given in the training set. 4. Uh, if uh, indeed there is a mis labeling or noise, an input in the, the actual class is really a simple model like the rectangle than the simple rectangle because it has less variance and is less affected by single instances, will be better discriminator than the wiggly shape, although the simple one may take may make slightly more errors on the training set. Given comparable empirical error, we say that a simple but not too much model would generalize better than a complex model. This principle is known as a king's razor, which states that simpler explanations are more plausible and any unnecessary complexity should be shaved off.